My last year teaching in the public school system was in 2017. I remember it so well because an eighth grade student came to me and said, Ms. Robinson, I'm dropping out. Imagine how I felt hearing the words of an eighth grader say I'm dropping out and I'm not even going to go to high school. I spent countless of hours talking to this student about his attendance, his attitude, and his academics. Not to mention being one of the only African-American female teachers in a district that was predominantly black and white, black and brown students. But it wasn't enough. My presence wasn't enough. It was not until later that I realized that it was, not, it was not our presence, but it was the present time. You see, the world is changing and it is evolving. But society is not, and our systems are not changing. There is a huge deficit in the building trades industry. And the undeniable truth is that the world still needs to be built. We need infrastructure. We need roads and bridges and highway and affordable housing. All still need to be built by the skilled hands of a tradesman. Baby boomers are hanging up their tool belts. And there's not enough of the next generation, Gen X, Gen Zs, and Gen Ys to fill the positions fast enough. Now this is not just a generational problem but a perception and a societal problem. You see, perception will say that a blue collar worker cannot make a sustainable income. Societal norms will say that you have to earn a four year, four year college degree in order to be successful. Generational biases will say that a 14 year old cannot handle a power drill. I know that they can. This is not just a generational problem, but a societal problem and a perception problem. When I was growing up, there was a famous toy, and still is today, called Legos. By a show of hands, who played with Legos? Pretty much every one of them. These tiny little red, green, little plastic little building blocks were not just educational, but they were fun. I remember spending hours at a time building up, tearing down again, and building back up. There was a time when I had this great idea that I would build my first house. And see, I lived in the projects. And those of you that don't know what the project is, it's low income housing. So we really lived in like cubby holes. There was no room to do anything. You could hear everything that was going on, even what was going on next door. So I had this idea that I would build my first house. So I got down on the floor and I started arranging the, cor the colors accordingly to how I wanted to see my house. The rooms were big, the doors were red. I imagined a huge home that I can build and breathe and move, not that little cubby hole that grew up in. That was my first exposure to the trades, and I didn't even know it. As I said, we grew up in the project, so we didn't have much in terms of means to be able to find or buy the biggest, latest, latest things or gadgets like bicycles and big reels. So I had three brothers. And so they would go out in the neighborhood and scour the neighborhood for parts of abandoned bicycles. Even parts like the handlebars and the, the seat cushions. And then they will even go into abandoned vehicles and find something that they can use. They will find wood and pieces of cardboard boxes, 
things that they can put together to build their first go-kart. For most, that was a second exposure to the trains. Perception, societal norms. I implore you today to think about not just the, what you're doing in terms of the skills, but how you are having these conversations with your students. How is perception perceived? I encourage you to think about an individual's personality, their passion, their purpose, and how they can propel their way based on their own skills. If we think about four areas of our development, the first would be curiosity, creativity, exposure, experiences. What about our experiences? The experiences that we take with us each and every day, what we learn by what we do, those experiences propel us to what we want out of life. As I indicated, there's a huge deficit in the building trades. Over 770,000 jobs are vacant in the building trades. 62% of all firms in the United States are looking for viable candidates with skills to fill vacant positions. Experiences, curiosity, all play a part in our development. Exposing individuals to something early rather than later. Allowing them to take the opportunity to see if that's something that they want to do. Allow that young lady, if she chooses, to pick up a drill. Allow that young man, if he chooses, to get in culinary, to get into dance. Our curiosity allows us to be exposed to the unknown, to figure out what we want to do in life, and it's not by the hands of someone else. We need to learn to feed our students with the knowledge that they want to do things out of life without stagnating them into a box and telling them this is what you have to do. You're allowing them not to use their creativity, their curiosity, their experiences, and their exposure to their own life. There's more than one way to reach your destination. When we open up this opportunity, we allow students to engage more into who they are, their own identity. They begin to walk with confidence and with courage knowing that they are traveling down the path that they choose for themselves that not stuck in a box that someone else created for them. The skills is a, a dying breed, but it's the newest currency because it creates a pathway to success by losing your skills hands to learn something, to do something that will change your life tremendously. It starts with the conversation of understanding someone's personality, their passion, their purpose, and their full potential are the drivers to lead them to success. Allow them to identify what success looks like instead of putting them in a box and denying them their own creativity and denying them the curiosity of learning something different outside of their comfort zone. Who wants to be comfort? Because when you're in your comfort zone, you don't move. You don't engage in other things and other opportunities. Exposure is access to opportunity so that you can figure out what's for you and what's not for you. 
But you won't know it if you don't get in the game and learn to do it on your own without the help or encouragement of someone else denying you. Life lessons are what we have to use in order for us to understand who we are. Life lessons is what shows us who we are and who we can become. And they are good as well as bad and indifferent, but they're your lessons to learn and to move in a way that will help and encourage you to get the career of your choice, of your choosing. Just like that house. I envision it and I begin to build. Your life is like building blocks. You can tear it down and you can start all over. You can pick it back up or you can lay it down. But it's your choice. It's your choice. Even as an adult, there were times when I was told, why would you leave that state job? It pays benefits. You can retire. I was in the box. I was not allowed to use my creativity. I was not cut from that cloth. So I took a leap of faith and I stepped out. I made a decision that my passion and my purpose in life was mine, that no one can take away. Your skills are your skills. No one can take it away from you. But when you deny yourself, you're telling them, yes, you can take my skills. I love my mother dearly, but she told me to leave that job. Don't leave that job because it was comfortable. I chose to be uncomfortable. We have to be uncomfortable for a while so that we can get the things that we want out of life. If we are comfortable, we won't move. We're stuck and we're stagnant. But when we become uncomfortable, we're fighting and saying, there's something more than what I have right now. And I'm willing to sacrifice and do some things that's gonna change my life forever. Don't get in a box. Use your skills, your creativity, your experiences, exposure, your exposure when you was a young, young person. They count. Learning something different, it counts. It adds value to your life. You may not know it now, but five, 10 years later, you can say what I did back then, it helped propel me to where I am today. It is the stepping stone. It is the bridge to get you to where you need to be. Create those building blocks. Whatever color you choose, they're your blocks. You can organize them the way you choose. Do not let no one stop you from achieving your goals, your aspirations, and your dreams. I would like to leave you with this quote by the famous Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He said, no work is insignificant. All labor that uplifts humanity have dignity and importance. It should be taken with painstaking excellence. Everything you do should have a mindset that I'm gonna achieve it no matter what. I'm gonna do it when it hurts. I'm gonna do it when I'm scared. I'm gonna do it when I don't know what the outcome is going to be. I'm gonna do it anyhow, anyway. Thank you.